Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to look at XRP and the recent pump and dump and what lessons we can take from this recent pump and dump and use it moving forward so that we're not left with our heads being slaughtered like the rest of the sheeple did waiting for a pump. Same deal with Dogecoin. We're going to take a quick look at that as well. So if you find some value from the content, be sure to let me know down below. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let's get it to 50,000 subscribers and hit the bell notification icon if you want to be updated with more cryptocurrency content. All right, let's take a look. This is from yesterday's video, XRP, will Wall Street bets pump it? Now, this probably wasn't Wall Street bets. It was in the groups. We've talked about this before. There were some comments, so I'm acknowledging you guys saying that it wasn't Wall Street Bets. It's probably spawned from Wall Street Bets and come into another subreddit, Satoshi Street Bets or thereabouts. The main point is when you put out a pump and dump, you're not supposed to tell people which coin, which asset you were going to pump because people are going to front run you. And I think this was probably a setup for the sheep. They've seen what happened on Dogecoin. They've seen what has happened on GameStop and other US stocks getting a short squeeze, which doesn't happen in these cryptocurrencies. And now they have just used that and used the noobs and basically dumped on them. So this is what was in yesterday's video. Take a quick listen. Uh, the pump, I think a lot of it has already happened. People are trying to front run the pump. If you know about a pump, wouldn't you just want to get in earlier than the pump? It, it makes sense to be getting in earlier than waiting for the time of the pump. So essentially we did see most of the move already. We know that the high was only around 75, 76 cents, depending on which exchange. So by this stage we're at 62 and a lot of people were waiting for that point. Now let's take a quick look at the chart and on XRP, the dollar, let's drop it down to the hourly chart. At the exact time of the, of the supposed pump was the exact time of the massive, massive dump. And it literally happened a couple of hours earlier where the dump began because then they even front ran the supposed pump with a dump and the dump just absolutely destroyed a lot of people and there were some comments on the channel so it's not just all hearsay there are people that got wrecked in this they had to have been there were people buying at those tops right to the bottom there was a 47 percent drop and until the end of the pump so far the lowest has been is a 55 percent drop now we can see that probably there was a lot of people that bought in through this first part. Obviously the volume shows us that. So maybe some people got around say 45 cents, maybe they got out at 57 or 60, but normally what happens is they will hold on waiting for that thousand percent or whatever they saw before, like on Dogecoin. And that is probably where a lot of people got caught up thinking it's going to go back up because they don't know how to read a chart and they don't know when the trend is over. This has been dumped. That's all the bad news with XRP. What is some of the good news? Let's take it back to a daily chart and have a look at the support and resistance. So the support is back here at around that 19, 20 cents. Then we saw a higher support, which is a great sign. 26. We saw an early entry here at around 27 to 30 cents before this pump. So you could have made safely probably double your money before this real sharp peak came in and dumped on everyone. But we're finding higher lows. So as much as everyone and myself included want to hate on XRP, the lows are getting higher. It's pretty straightforward. Here's the low connected to the next low here. Probably not here. You're probably going to look at the low before the pump. And if we happen to see this trend continue and it comes down, maybe we'll get it to come back to around that 26 cent level. They're all closes here, so it's a nice support level. So I wouldn't be surprised if it came back and just sort of sat at around 28 to 30 cents and started going sideways again like we saw here. Yesterday's video, we also talked about what happens after pumps. So these are some of the lessons that we're learning from pumps. Pumps happen very quickly in the crypto space and then you get a much longer period of it going sideways. Then the dump occurs very quickly, another long period sideways. But within this sideways, there is a pattern setting up. There is a higher low forming. There's all sort of good stuff in here. Next, very quick pump. Everyone knew about this already and the dump has already occurred. We're back down here. So what do we think is going to happen next? What do I think is going to happen next? I definitely think we're going to see some sort of sideways action. Maybe we'll see some sort of slight bounces. The bounces are going to happen whether they're here, whether they go sideways in here, because people think that it's a cheap price 
not knowing what has happened previously, not understanding that there still needs to be some accumulation time. So let's clear off some of those lines, make it a little bit cleaner for us to see. The other lesson that we learned was high volume, high volume on the pump. Then we start to trickle out more high volume on the moves, trickling out, trickling out, high volume has happened and it's relatively same sort of volume if we add it up, more or less, when you compare it to these levels here, all right? So that's pretty much what we've learned from these pump and dumps. And this is a fantastic example so that we can use this moving forward into other cryptocurrencies, especially when we're looking at our top five altcoins, our 10 altcoins. Uh, I know you guys have talked about, uh, thank you for the, the one inch discussion and API three, those sort of things. So I'll have a look at those in a sec, but essentially, that is what I expect to see on some of the smaller caps. So I'm gonna learn from this and just know that there has to be some patience. So we saw it, the pump and we're just gonna measure from this top point to when the, uh, the, the massive break occurred down. So there's a break here and here, they're the two big bars. So if I measure across, it's about 28 days. So at this top area, people have about 28 days of uh, just waiting time, thinking that the market's going to go up. Basically patience at the highs. Buying the lows, this is a low here, they think they're gonna get some great value. They bought the low, tiny pump, and the rest of it's a dump. Now let's have a look at the, the time along the bottom to the next point before it breaks out. There's about 37 days. But I have a feeling if I measure from the absolute low to that point, it's gonna be closer to our one month period, about 28 days. 30, 30 days, perfect. So we get about a week of a pump, three to seven days of a pump, then we get about 30 odd, give or take, what's a few days between friends, a few days of a sideways accumulation period, or in this case, distribution, just depending on where we are in the market. So now that we know that, that sets us up to beat the market much easier. So we've already seen this, this, this pump here of, one day, two day, three day, four day. What have we seen in the past? We have seen a, about probably, there's two days to this low, and then about seven days to that low there. This is a little different because it is just 300,000 people on Telegram all trying to do the same thing at once, whereas these weren't orchestrated like this pump. So there was seven days there. Let's have a look at the breakout here. How many days is on this one? Measure to the top, about four days into that pump. Obviously the market was starting to move beforehand and we can see the swing setting up, the higher lows. Just bring that in there so you can see. There is nice clean, higher low, higher low, starting to build and then it has a, has a breakout. So we get one, two, three, four days into this top, about seven days into this low here, a couple more. Another four days into this top, even though it was supposed to be on the 1st of February. That's all great information for us to use moving forward. So they're the lessons that I'm taking from this. This would be specific to XRP. I haven't tested other markets to know if it's gonna be a four to seven day pump and then about a 30 day sideways accumulation. You can see that it doesn't always work, but it's interesting to note that it can work on those cycles. A seven day, 28 day, you're getting these multiples of seven, whether it's one lot of seven, four lots of seven, it's like a weekly occurrence, there's a weekly, feel in the timeframes of the market. So keep that in mind as well. So those numbers are specific for a pump and dump. Pump, sideways, dump, sideways, pump, all right? The other thing I'm looking at here is, what about sustained moves? They're gonna take a little bit longer or a fair bit longer. This move from the low to the high is about 60 days. So it's about two months of a sustained up move. And we didn't get that really massive quick rush into those highs. So two months could take us from a low to a high. What about a high to a low? Measuring top to the bottom, 27. So about a month down, two months up, one month down. So when we're not in these real hectic periods, we can see sustained moves of around one to two months. So keeping that in mind, we can then move forward. If this market doesn't happen to push and it takes about two months for a market to go sideways and accumulate, there's nothing wrong with that. We layer that in with our support and resistance levels and our swing charting, then we start to come more holistic into our plan of what can happen next. So in a short term time frame to wrap up XRP, we can see that the pump has happened. I definitely think the dump is on. If we happen to 
level out at our support levels at around that 26 through to about 28 to 30 cents, I wouldn't be surprised. The main factor here is we wanna see higher lows. So that low pinned off that low and wherever this starts to, to settle, that's where we wanna see the ripple market to show us more of a bullish sign, a bullish accumulation leading up possibly into another push into the highs. Uh, if that happens to break down, then we're on alert for a lot more downside potential. Now I make this for the non-fanboy XRP investors. This is probably gonna be a really good point to have a look at, especially this low and this low here, the one at 20 cents and the one at 25 or six cents there. So you're on your 24. All right, so that's XRP. Let's have a quick look at Dogecoin just to see any similarities so that we can use this moving forward. Daily chart, we saw one, two days up into this massive pump. Now we're seeing a sideways accumulation. I suspect it's going to be a distribution because the volume has just absolutely gone nowhere. It's just started to taper off a hell of a lot. And maybe we will see a small pump into these highs here, 150 but it's much higher risk. We want to be getting massive multiples. So I, I suspect that'll happen. Maybe we'll have a trending down over the course of many, many, many months or weeks, small little bumps along the way until we start to plateau again into our accumulation zone. So remember our accumulation zone here is under 30 sats, ideally under 20. But yeah, if we get it under 30, that's probably a much better position there. So that's Doge. We can see the same sort of thing happen, pump, dump sideways is happening at the moment until people run out of belief that this is going to take off. It's really just the emotions of the market. As soon as the belief goes in this, you watch it dump. It happens every single time. All right, before we wrap it up, let's have a look at the crypto fear and greed index. The greed is coming back into the market. We're at 76, yesterday 77, last week 71, and we know it was really hectic back in January around 93 got up to around 95 so there is some greed coming back into the market a few little news articles uh, for the xrp robin hood pauses use of instant deposits for crypto trades so be aware if you're on robin hood trying to buy your cryptos be aware that they can change the rules at any time it's best to use a, in a trusted exchange that isn't going to shut you off or use a decentralized exchange Ripple is not on those, so you'll have to look for something else, use something trusted. But Robinhood and the like, I would personally stay away from them, but you do what you need to do. Next bit of news, Cointelegraph, Reddit rages as XRP price crashes 50% hours after hitting two weeks high. We've just gone through that on the chart. We can see why that happened. Pump and dumps don't work if you tell people what is going to be pumped at what specific time. All right, was there a short interest? What short squeeze? Here is what really went on behind XRP's recent 170% rally. So we don't get a short squeeze in cryptocurrencies like we see in the stock market. There aren't hedge funds heavily shorting these cryptocurrencies. This is the, the, the Reddit subreddit group that came up, Satoshi Street Bets, to do pump and dumps of crypto. I would be highly cautious of these sorts of Reddits now. Wall Street Bets, we've seen that they do some research or whoever's in the group is doing some research, posting that, and then they're figuring out whether that's a, a great buying opportunity, selling opportunity, whatever it is. Satoshi Bets, yet to be proven. If they're doing pump and dumps like XRP, you can almost bet your bottom dollar that you will get screwed out of your Bitcoin, Ethereum, and fiat currency with pump and dumps that they are just putting together and giving out to their thousands of people who or millions, whoever's in that group. Ripple facing new class action lawsuit over XRP, this time in Florida. Probably not as big news as the SEC, but again, another state now is trying to sue Ripple. Moving on, we don't need to go on to that any, more, any further. So just be aware of these sorts of things. Uh, Ripple, price rejected at 75 cents. Just more news that they're reporting on the same thing. We've already covered this in the charts. So if you're looking for more Ripple information, it's pretty much all in the chart there. The SEC stuff isn't, so be aware of that, or the, the lawsuits that we saw here in Florida. Last piece here, again, XRP price crashes to 40 cents after pump groups pushed it to 70 cents. Same deal, we've already seen this, we understood it happened, and now the news is covering it just like I'm covering it on the channel. So XRP, that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Last thing, XRP BTC, got a pump on that. Hopefully you, you guys managed to recover some of your Bitcoin value, but I suppose if you're long-term hodlers, you believe in this long-term, so maybe you'd rather 
accumulate more XRP. That's pretty much it for the XRP video. I've got Ethereum, altcoin videos and Bitcoin videos coming out this week. If you haven't already, check out the video I just popped up today on how to pay no or low crypto taxes wherever you are. So that's on the channel. I did a collaboration with Crypto Tips. If you found some value, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, share it with someone that you think will be helped with their XRP holdings. The course is out. Hit the link down below, drop your email address. You'll get a discount code there. Uh, currently it's at 40% off. So go and do that now if you're interested in learning more about how to trade long-term and set up yourself with a pretty decent investment portfolio if you can get that together. I'll see you in the course. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.